Right now, I'm going to show you a couple of the new features inside of Photoshop 2020, which is going to enable us to get that beautiful out of focus background effect. There's two things we're going to look at. One which takes advantage of the depth map from the latest mobile phones. And then we're going to look at any photograph using the amazing selection tools now, how to build our own depth map and create that beautiful bokeh out of focus effect. <laughs> Hey, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And today we're gonna to have a look at a couple of the new features inside of Photoshop 2020. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at creating a background blur. We're gonna look at a new feature inside of Lens Blur. And then we're also gonna have a look at the amazing object selection tool when we go to build our own depth map. So why don't we start with creating a beautiful background blur effect. And we're gonna start for photo from a mobile phone, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to use it on regular photos as well. So if we look here at a photo that was taken on the iPhone 11 Pro, this was an HEIC format. If we look into the channel, you'll notice that there's a depth map. So it creates an additional channel. And this channel, what it does is it uses computational photography to determine the edges and the distance from the viewer of the different objects in the photograph. And it builds what's known as a depth map, which is what we're looking at. So as things get further away, they get lighter. As they get closer, they get darker. This is very similar to what they use in 3D, actually. And if we look at it, see how it's mapping to the different objects and their distance. So that's what portrait mode does. And generally speaking, we make all these adjustments on the phone. But now we can do this inside of Photoshop very easily using this particular feature. Now, the depth maps do work in previous versions of Photoshop. But let's have a look at the new features right now. So if we want to view this, we just choose filter and we're going to go and choose blur. And then we're going to go down and grab our lens blur. So if we turn on lens blur, here's the photograph. And we can adjust the radius to give it more or less blur. Let's give it more blur to make it really obvious what we're working with. Excellent. Now let me show you the new feature. We have the set focal point here. And this enables us to take this photograph with the depth map and focus it in post just like we would in a camera. So all we need to do is click on the area that we want to be sharp and notice how this area becomes sharp. It throws the background off. We could click on the background or we could go through here. Each one of these levels clicking in these different areas. Look at this. And then it just rack focuses this photograph. So that's really cool. Now let me show you how to do that to a regular photo. Okay, so here's a photograph that's very flat looking because everything's sharp and everything's in focus. We want to give it that expensive lens look. Now you don't always have that expensive lens on you. Maybe you don't even own a camera that's capable of it, or you weren't using that camera, or maybe you just have a photograph that was given to you. There's many reasons that you're not going to do it in camera because a lot of people might say, well, just do it in camera. Well, I have this photograph. It's already shot. I can't do it in camera now. Can't go back. So let's create this effect right now. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to build a depth map. So what that means is we need to define a foreground, midground, background. Foreground's the person, midground's the arch, background are the buildings. So let's go ahead and make the selections and build out our depth map. So the first thing I want to do is make a selection. So I'm just going to go up to my selection tools. Now in 2020, you'll notice that on top now we have the object selection rather than the quick selection. Any of these are going to enable us to turn on select subject. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to choose select subject. And then when we do, Photoshop is going to examine the photo. It knows the person with the umbrella is the subject, uses AI known as Adobe Sensei to make that selection. Now, let's have a look between the legs here. We want to uh, take away the selection there so that we cut out that hole. So what we're going to do here is when we've got our object selection, we've got two options, lasso, rectangle. Let's choose the rectangle option. Now, if I hold down the Alt or the Option key, it's going to take away from the selection. So I'm just going to click and drag roughly around that area, release, and let Photoshop do all the work. Look at that, made the selection. I love this new feature. So I'm going to hit Control J or Command J to copy this person to a new layer. Now, I want to fill them with black because I want them to be the most forward object inside of the photo. So I'm just going to hit the D key to reset foreground background colors. And now we're going to fill with the foreground color. So we're going to hit the option key, which would be Alt on Windows and the shift key. The shift key will protect transparency. And now we're just going to hit the delete backspace. 
and that fills that with black and we can see we've got that so I'm gonna hide it now we're gonna work on the midground I want this arch here to be our midground in fact I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see those edges um, yeah, there's an extra tip make sure you're not zoomed all the way in and miss parts of your photo all right what we're gonna do though is we're gonna go from rectangle I'm gonna go to the lasso mode and I'm just gonna go around here and make a selection all the way around this arch now it's not gonna be a perfect selection obviously whoops and that's okay so we're just gonna let it do its work all right pretty good now to add to it hold down the shift key and I'm just gonna go around there and we can touch up those areas see that area in there I don't want alt or option and see how it just saves you a lot of work let's add the other side so I'm gonna hold down the shift key make a selection a rough selection around this arch tell it hey I want to select this object it adds that to the selection great so we've got a couple more areas we want to pick up what I want to do is I want to pick up this traffic light so I'm just holding down the shift key again I'm going to draw around that traffic light I'm going to grab this pole just remember shift key is going to add option key is going to take away let's see if we can grab that bird even let's see how good this is look at that grabbed it even though it was really bad let's grab down here grab this traffic light pretty good all right and I'm just gonna pick up those little bits there all right why don't we grab these cars and add all this stuff as well because this is kind of more foreground than it is background or mid mid ground all right so rather than trying to get in here where it keeps thinking and taking more time I'm gonna grab my lasso tool just a regular lasso and then just hit the plus key uh, the shift key for the plus and I'm just gonna draw around here and this is just gonna quickly make this selection for me now just save a little time there we go and the same thing over here let's just grab that area although we probably could use Adobe the object selection to grab those but that's looking pretty good and let me also go down here just adding this great I also want to grab this lamp let's go back to our object selection holding down that shift key let's make a selection around the lamp and it picks that up let's see if we can get this look at that pretty good all right so what we want to do now is we want to copy all of this to a new layer so we're going to hit Control or command j to move it to a new layer and let's see what we've got so there's our foreground there's our midground and for a background we're just going to add white so what i'm going to do is hit the Control or command key just hold that down when we create the new layer icon notice by the way it's now a little square for plus for the new layer they've changed the icon so i've got that layer and it's just fill it with white so we've got white right now as the background so command control is going to use the background and then shift or delete to fill it with white so right now we've got our three different layers now what I want to do is I'm going to take this middle ground and I'm just going to lock the transparency and what I want to do is just fill this with gray so I'm just going to hit shift delete or shift return and it brings up the fill dialog box let's grab 50% gray and click OK so now we've got our foreground a background and our midground okay let me just pull this down so we can see all the different layers there okay so here's the thing we've got our foreground we've got a background and we've got a midground which is gray but right now it would just look like a piece of card so what we want to do is we want to add a little dimension to it we want it to kind of moving from the foreground into that midground so the way to do that is to grab a gradient so we're going to grab our gradient tool right now we're going to click on the gradient editor at the top there go under basics and we're going to grab foreground and background now you might have noticed all our gradients are now inside these little folders with lots of new gradients for you to play with but we're going to start foreground and background and we know the foreground is black the background rather than being white we're going to click on it choose the color swatch and now we're going to sample that gray and click OK so now it's going to create a gradient where we can go from the black to the gray so why don't we just apply that across on the side and notice because we've locked that transparency we're not going outside of the bounds now this is going to cause a gradual movement there which is going to be much better we want to do it the other side now here's the problem if I just click and drag like that notice it replaces 
the other gradient. So what we need to do is just go up there under our basics. We're going to change it to foreground to transparent. And now we can add the gradient there and we can grab it from the bottom and see how we're just adding those gradients in there now and it's not affecting the other ones. In fact, let me just go a little bit more there. That's nice. All right, what we need to do though is in order to get this to blend in, we need to do a ground plane. So we're just going to create a layer underneath, hit the control and new layer icon gives us a new layer. And then why don't we hide everything for now so we can see where we want to put it. I'm going to use my rectangle selection tool, click from the bottom, and I'm going to drag up to there. Now, why am I choosing there? I'm looking for where the building is meeting the road. So we want this depth to go all the way up to that building. But then this plane is pretty much at the same distance from the viewer. So we don't want to put a gradient on there. All right, great. So let's turn all our layers back on. Okay, so let's grab our foreground to background. And we're just going to go in here once again, click this stop, and we're going to sample that color. But what we want to do is we want to make that color just a little bit lighter. So we're going to select it here and I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. And the reason for that is that we're actually going past here. So we want it to be a little lighter up the top. So let's apply that gradient on the new layer. So we're going to start from here. We definitely want it black around her feet. The reason for that is if something is anchored to the ground, it needs to be the same shade. Otherwise, it's going to look like it's just floating in the air and it's going to look strange. So there we go. We've created a nice gradient going from the dark to the lighter color up there. So that's going to work nicely for our purposes. Now, there's one more thing that we need to do, and we need to just kind of blur this line. Otherwise, it's going to be a little too thick and a little too obvious. So we're going to choose filter blur. Going to grab our Gaussian blur, and I want a nice soft edge, and that'll just blend in nicely. See how that's just creating more of that beautiful gradient effect where it's fading off. Now, what I'm going to do is just lighten this up ever so slightly because I notice it's lighter here than it is there. So I'm just going to hit Control L, Command L on Mac for levels. And then we're going to take our midtones and just lighten those up just a tad so that the front there is the same shade. All right, so we've got those pretty close to each other. Click OK, and that's going to give us what we want. Now, what we need to do is we need to turn this into our map. So what we're going to do is select all these layers and rather than flatten them, we're going to right click and we're going to convert to a smart object. Now, the reason we put them in a smart object is if we find that things need to be touched up, such as little gaps here, and if those become a problem, we might have to go back in and retouch it. So what we want to do now is we want to make a depth map. So we're going to hit Control A to select all. Control Command C to copy it. Now we're going to go into a channel and we're going to create our depth map. So we're going to create a new channel by clicking here. And now we're just going to paste in what we copied. Control V, Command V on Mac, paste it in, I turn off my selection. And there we go, we have our alpha channel. So what we want to do now is click on RGB at the top, make sure that alpha is not on. If it looks like this, turn the eye off, make sure just the RGB is selected. Go back to our layer. We're going to hide our depth map layer and we're going to work on the background. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to make a quick copy so I can show you a before and after. You don't need to do this. All right, now we're ready to just go in and use our lens blur. So we're going to choose filter blur, go down to our lens blur. So what we want to do is we want to turn up a little bit of the radius so we can get us some blur. Notice the whole photograph is blurry. That's because I haven't selected my source yet. So you want to just go down and choose alpha one because that's what that channel was called. And then when we select that, notice it picks up the depth map. Now we can use our focal point to click in the background, set that in focus. We can set our person in focus. We can go down the road. Look at this. Just following that gradient and see how we're choosing different focal planes. Now this is obviously too blurred. Let's bring it back to a more reasonable level, which would be maybe around here. So there we go, maybe a little bit more. So we want our background in focus, you know, so we're looking at the building or we could choose our foreground. So we're looking at the person with the building in the background. 
And we're just gonna click OK to apply it right now. This is part of a series of the Photoshop 2020 new features. So I've got several of those videos. Um, I encourage you to just click around and watch some of the other videos as well. And I'm also curious, what is your favorite feature so far inside of Photoshop 2020? Let me know in the comments underneath. And so if you like these kind of tutorials, consider subscribing to Photoshop Cafe. All you need to do is click that subscribe button. And I usually upload a new tutorial every single week, generally on a Tuesday. Make sure you ring the notification bell so you know when I upload it. And so anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Thank mm -hmm. you.